When Sawyer arrives, you will receive three to four boxes depending on what you ordered. Box one contains the robot arm. Box two contains the controller and cables. Box three contains the appropriate power cord for your location and any optional accessories such as grippers, tool plate, or a robot mounting plate. Box four is a wooden crate and contains the pedestal if ordered. Open the star box first, which is box three that has the accessories, and you'll find the Sawyer setup guide. If you ordered a pedestal, start by opening the pedestal crate, box four, and assembling the pedestal. Use a small flathead screwdriver to pry up the tabs so they are straight. Now remove the top and sides of the crate. Remove any loose packing material. When assembled, the pedestal weighs 77 kilograms or 169 pounds. Inside the crate, you'll find the base, a column with a cable cover, handlebars, and two threaded rods. To remove the base, raise the leveling feet and roll it off the pallet. It is not necessary to lift the base. Lower the leveling feet to keep the base from moving. Next, position the column on the base. It is keyed to only fit in one orientation. Now, place the handlebars on top of the column. The handlebars are designed to fit with the flat side facing the front, opposite the channel in the column. Be sure the washers are on the rods when inserting them into the handlebars. Finally, insert the two threaded rods through the holes in the handlebars and use a 24 millimeter socket to tighten the two rods securely. Great, you've set up the pedestal. Now let's get the arm ready. The arm weighs 19 kilograms or 42 pounds. Open box one, remove the packing on top, and carefully lift the arm out of the box taking care not to grab Sawyer by the head. When placing the arm on the pedestal, you'll see seven bolt holes and one dowel hole. Align the dowel pin on the handlebars with the dowel hole in the base of the arm. Then, insert the seven 25 millimeter bolts and tighten securely using a six millimeter hex key. All right, the arm's in place. Let's set up the controller. Open box two, and remove the controller and connected e-stop. Turn the controller upside down so that you can access the bottom of the controller and plug in the cable. Read the end user license agreement prior to connecting cables. By removing the EULA, you agree to abide by the terms of the agreement. Pull the controller and display cables through the back of the controller. This will keep the cables out of the way when mounting to the pedestal. Plug the controller cable into the controller and secure using the retaining clip. Plug the display cable into the controller and you will hear a satisfying snap when it's in. To plug in the power cord, you'll find it in box three. Pull the power cord from whichever side of the controller is closest to your power supply. Plug it in and secure it with the retaining clip. If mounting the controller to the pedestal, set the controller upright on the pedestal with the door facing away from the column. Insert and tighten the four 12 millimeter bolts using a five millimeter hex key. If you're not mounting it, set it upright on a stable surface. Connect the controller cable to the base of the arm and secure with the retaining clip. Plug in the display cable and listen for the snap. Remove the cable cover on the column, route the cables into the channel, and replace the cover. Now it's time to power on Sawyer. First, make sure the e-stop button is in the out or released position by twisting the button in the direction of the arrow. If Sawyer is mounted on a pedestal, raise the leveling feet and move the robot to its workspace. Lower the leveling feet to stabilize the robot. Plug in the power cord to an outlet rated for at least six amps. Press the power button on the controller and step back from the robot's reach. When Sawyer's eyes open, the homing screen appears. 
press the selector knob to automatically home the arm. In the next video tutorial, the Baxter gripper adapter plate and gripper will be installed.